So that's the solutions. Uh, so what are the advantages of Islamic world? And deficits also. What's the meaning of deficits? You know, the, the deficiencies. Deficit. The things that are lacking, missing. Ah, yeah. I've traveled to several Islamic countries and I've found that the best thing about that is the accessibility of worship and to hear the adhan called just the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis is a blessing. You also have um, freedom of practice, the ability to go about living your um, Islamic life and worship in an open society where there is no um, fear of retribution because of that. That's certainly an advantage for every Muslim in, in this day and age. The deficiencies of the Muslim countries is oftentimes they tend to see only the problems that they have or the issues that they have in their local areas and that would lead to a situation where they're more closed and they don't acknowledge the people, the Muslim communities around the world. Uh, if we did that and we gather around the Islamic um, identity and issues, we certainly would have the power of being um, numerous and that would help in many ways. Okay, the other question is, uh, how about the spreading of Islam, how it must be did? I mean, which ways do you advise to, to the Islamic world, even in USA and other countries? Uh, even, yeah, you said that you have in some countries, even you repeat that, then you say that, uh, what do you advise to spread Islam? Well, if we look at the history of Islam and how it spread through the world, people like Ibn Battuta, Tariq ibn Ziyad, who opened up North Africa and moved into the Iberian Peninsula, these people were so effective in spreading Islam simply because of their good character and their manners. They were intelligent, they were articulate, they were able to deal with the people at their level, and they carried the message of Islam through what they did, not necessarily what they preached. So it's very important that as Muslims today, we exhibit those same behaviors. I find that oftentimes in America, when we have Muslim families that their children are in public school, the parents don't get involved in the public school as volunteers. This causes a gap. The teachers work with the students, but they don't see the adults. And we, it, it presents an issue where the parents are maybe fearful of being exposed for being Muslims or for not being accepted for who they are. And in a society like America, that couldn't be farther from the truth. People here are very accepting and very open to meeting new people and accepting new ideas. So we need to take advantage of that. Then uh, we come to the sensitive uh, feelings. Uh, <coughs> what you are feeling when you are fasting? Could you talk about mm -hmm. uh, uh, about fasting? Uh, sure. Four, three, two, one. Yes, we the, for me, one of the most special times of the year is Ramadan. It really is a time for me to focus again on what it means to be a Muslim, to really put aside this world and live out our Islam in a way that purifies the body and the soul. Um, setting aside time to make extra prayers, attending the tarawiyah, uh, reading Quran, um, oftentimes reading it, you know, at least one time in Ramadan, perhaps some more. Um, it's a chance to really block out the things that get in our way of creating a peacefulness in our own lives. And Ramadan really does that because you don't have much time for anything else. It's challenging as a teacher because the last few years we've been teaching and fasting. And so it gives us a greater appreciation for the time that we can make iftar and feel the relief that is guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, what about Hajj? Have you been in Hajj? I have not made Hajj, but I've had the wonderful opportunity of going to Mecca for Umrah. And it was an experience that I would love to repeat again and again. I was very fortunate that I made my whole Umrah within a meter 
of the Kaaba. And every time I made the, uh, the tawaf around the Kaaba, I got to touch the Rukun Yamani, and I actually got to touch the black stone. And to stand in the spot where Ibrahim and, and his son placed the stones to, to build this structure, it's just amazing to me. Um, it's, people always said that when you make Umrah or Hajj, it really calls for you to come back. And indeed, I feel that to be the case. Um, as soon as I have the opportunity, inshallah, I will go back to Saudi Arabia and perform the Umrah again, and inshallah, the Hajj soon. When you are praying, what do you feel? Oh. It's, um, for me, sometimes it's a point of sadness, because in the Salah, I reflect on all the things that I'm probably falling short of, the things that I haven't done, and I really open my heart for Allah and ask for His forgiveness during the Salah. Um, this is the one time that I'm closest to Him. And it's the one time that I feel that I'm very much exposed, that Allah has the, at that moment, a, a window to my soul, and it's a very important part of my day. Okay. Uh, Salah, uh, fasting, and uh, Salah fasting. You, uh, when you read Quran, what do you feel, sister? I'm always amazed at when I read Quran, of course, I'm, I'm not proficient enough in Arabic to read it in Arabic. Um, when I recite my prayers, I use the same surahs over and over again. Um, but I'm counting on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees that each letter of Quran that I recite will be recorded for me. And uh, inshallah, that will be for my benefit. But I found so many amazing things. I know that translating the Arabic into English is one of the most difficult things to do because of the richness of the Arabic language. but I find that there are so many possibilities and so many promises made in Qur'an that it's, it's really amazing and um, really does affect the soul. The more that you read and the more that you're affected by the words, um, you, it's, you start to understand the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly majestic and um, it's a comfort. Sister, almost I finished my first years. So, if you want to say something that you forget to say, or if you have an advice to the Islamic world, now uh, you can say this. Then I, I, I think the most important thing is, as we um, are, are walking on this earth, that all Muslims are responsible for making da'wah, to, to really not preach Islam, but be good examples and follow the role of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the, the act of living their Islam to its fullest, um, using it as a way to guide and encourage one another and others and bring them to Islam. And it's an incredible opportunity for each and every one of us to fulfill our Islamic obligation. Uh, do you want to celebrate uh, the audience Islamic world in Ramadan? You can. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. Please join us for our Ramadan anytime you'd like. You're very welcome. Dilersen zengin yaparsın En yücelerin gücesi Yokluğuna düşürme Zalime muhtaç etme Lütfeyle bizlere Zenginlerin zengini Alanda veren de sensin Benim canım Allah'ım El Muhni ismini Çok seviyorum Ey yücelerin gücesi, benim canım Allah'ım, el muhni ismini çok seviyorum. Ey yücelerin gücesi, 
Benim canım Allah'ım Teslim şu kalbim Maneviyat zenginliğime Unutma beni ne olur Fakirim sensiz ben Koru tüm çocukları Affım ol Allah'ım Alanda veren de sensin Benim canım Allah'ım El Muhni ismini Çok seviyorum Ey yücelin gücesi, benim canım Allah'ım. El Muhni ismini çok seviyorum. Ey yücelin gücesi, benim canım Allah'ım. El Muhni ismini çok seviyorum. Ey yücelin gücesi, benim canım Allah'ım. El Muhni ismini çok seviyorum Ey yücelin gücesi benim canım Allah'ım